Hello, and welcome to the January 2022 Storage Labs Town Hall. We've got an exciting presentation for you today, including a look back on 2021, what's ahead for 2022, some customer highlights, and of course, the token report. But before we get started, let me take care of a little bit of housekeeping. This document and presentation contains forward-looking statements about our product direction. The development, release, and timing of any features or functionality described in our products remains the sole discretion of Storage Labs. The information herein is not a commitment to deliver any material, code, or functionality, and this should not be relied upon in making purchase decisions. Our speakers today will be Ben Golub, CEO of Storage Labs, Catherine Johnson, Chief People, Legal, and Compliance Officer, and me, John Gleason, Chief Operating Officer for Storage. We're going to start with an executive summary from Ben Golub. I'm going to give you a quick roadmap update and product update and cover a few customer highlights, and then Catherine's going to cover the token report. Finally, I'll wrap with a thanks to the community and a few extra updates. So first, let's get started with the executive summary. Ben, take it away. Thank you for that kind introduction. And as always, thank you for tuning in. Thank you to the wonderful storage employees now located in over 23 countries around the world. Thank you to our huge and growing network of storage node operators. And perhaps most importantly, thank you to our customers and our community. You are what makes storage what it is. This is starting the third year of our regular presentation of town halls. And this is honestly one of the most exciting town halls that we've had to present. As you may know, in April of this year that just passed, we launched Storage DCS. This was a major upgrade to our decentralized cloud storage service. We made major strides in performance, major strides in availability, in S3 compatibility, introducing the ability for people to have a uh, multi-tenant hosted gateway as well as locally hosted gateway, a ton of investment. And we're really glad to say that it's now appears to be paying off. Since launching Storage DCS in April, we've seen significant growth in customers and partners and usage and adoption. We've seen success in our four key use cases. We've seen major improvements to customer onboarding and UX and that's showing up throughout our funnel. And ultimately, all of this sort of ties into giving ourselves increased confidence that we now have product market fit. We are seeing that our product has achieved massive performance improvements, as you'll see in a little bit, over 50x faster than it was at the beginning of the year. We get a weekly report on our net promoter score, and it is consistently in the 35 to 45 range, which is, of course, world class. We are seeing continued growth in Lighthouse customers, some of whom we'll be talking about today. Um, we've signed our first petabyte scale customers, both on the uh, egress and on the storage side. And that, of course, is translating into multiple petabytes of both usage and egress. We continue to focus on long-term success of our node operators in 2021, uh, continuing our governance on our leadership on governance, and really embracing this notion of open. Of course, when we started as a, as a project, we were open source. For the past two years, we've tried to be very, very open about tokens and governance. This year, we took that a step further, being open in terms of our network statistics and producing a public API that allows people to slice and dice metrics. We also took a major step forward in terms of being not only open source, but really embracing the notion of open development with open bug lists, open issue lists, open roadmaps. And you'll see in a few days, we'll be taking the next step as well, which is being open about our carbon impact. We think it's a great story, but we wanna make sure that we put uh, real data behind all of that. 2022, as you might imagine, our number one, number two, and number three goal is growth and demand, growth in customers and partners. We want to continue working on performance. We've done a lot of work on throughput this year in 2021. Now we want to be working on latency in 2022, continue our progress towards decentralization with community satellites, work on APIs and authentication, privacy and compliance, getting better at serving those more compliant-centric storage use cases improving our ability to handle small files and going even further in terms of S3 compatibility. As you might imagine, we have largely finished everything we put into our original white paper, our original V3 white paper. So now it's time to lay out what we're going to be doing for the next couple of years and continuing our work on open development, governance, and financial discipline. Give you a sense of some of the highlights. If we compare where we are now compared to the start of 2021, just really improvements across the board, big increase in user registrations, big increase in data stored and bandwidth. We are now 50 times faster and of great interest to our customers, of course, we are now able to price ourselves 75% less than we were before, 
which now puts us one fifth to one fortieth the price of the centralized cloud providers. Even better in some cases when you look at total cost of ownership. We've got a nice set of customers, a nice set of partners, some of whom we'll be talking to later today. But all in all, really good signs of growth, really good signs of performance, really good signs of customer reaction well to our product. And so if that continues, we think we will have really good indications that we have product market fit. And of course, that'll be great things for our customers. That'll be great for us as a company and really, really good for our community and our network of storage node operators. So with that, let me turn it over to John Gleason. Thanks, Ben. 2021 was an amazing year and 2022 is shaping up to being even more incredible. There's a lot going on in the product department and the engineering department at Storage Labs, starting with our open development process. This was something we launched last year and we started with the storage node software, looking to open up our development process and get more external code contributions from the community and also provide greater visibility and prioritization input externally to storage. This year, we're taking that process and expanding it even further based on the success of what we saw last year. We're moving our entire development process to GitHub, including the roadmap, and opening that development process up so that we can get that greater contribution. There'll be complete transparency into every aspect of the roadmap, giving our outside community the ability to see what we're working on, provide input, and also contribute to the success of the platform. The 2022 roadmap is coming to GitHub in just a couple of weeks here. That storage map will be published on GitHub and give you complete visibility into where we're going in terms of what we're working on and what we prioritize. Of course, we want feedback on that. As it stands today, the major themes for our roadmap really start with maintaining and improving that enterprise grade service that we offer today. We want to make sure that durability stays at 100% and also that we continue to deliver at or above our 99.95% availability SLA. In terms of uh, performance, we did a great job with throughput last year, seeing sustained speeds of six gigabit or more um, on download. However, we wanna to continue to focus on things like latency and make sure that the full life cycle of upload and download performance are as fast as possible. We also wanna grow usage and fit uh, and revenue with our existing customer use cases. And that means working on small file support, adding some features to our existing geo-targeting to make that even better, and also adding in new layers for compliance related storage and of course, focusing on some of the video streaming that we see today, where a number of customers are getting a lot of success and a lot of value out of those features. Of course, we're also building for the future, and that means taking further steps towards decentralization and supporting a greater variety of Web 3.0 use cases. So look for work related to community satellites, opening up payments, improving the wallet experience for paying with storage, as well as continued support for use cases like DeFi payment integration, as well as NFTs. We've got a couple of customers who uh, over the last six months especially have really gotten tremendous value out of the platform and we're really excited about the way they're using it and how it's helping them with success. The first one I want to talk about is Pocket. Uh, Pocket Network uh, is a infrastructure as a service provider in the Web3 space. Pocket Network's mission is to coordinate open access to the world's public data. They provide blockchain data platform that enables Web3 apps to relay data to and from any blockchain. The performance, simplicity, and reliability benefits of the storage DCS Web3 infrastructure helps Pocket accelerate the spin-up of their new nodes. Pocket has benefited from the onboarding process, dashboarding, and storage support, which has been some of the best they've seen in the Web3 community. Pocket gets the most value from the storage DCS high sustained throughput in their fast sync utilities and spinning up new nodes. And we've been thrilled to work with them and grow with them on our network. Another application launching soon on Storage DCS is SlickSafe. SlickSafe provides a consumer-facing application for web, mobile, Windows, Linux, and Mac, including both iOS and Android, for storing and sharing data. A preview will be, will be available coming soon to the storage community, and then look for a broader launch in Q1. We're really excited about this because a lot of people who have come to storage expecting more of a consumer-facing application I've sometimes been a little disappointed to find an S3 compatible tool for developers. And so now we're excited to have an option here for uh, more of a consumer app for people to interact with the decentralized cloud storage network. And finally, we're really excited to partner with the Internet Archive on building the world's biggest digital library. The Internet Archive has long been an advocate for decentralized cloud storage, working with many projects. And recently, we completed a collection of LibriVox audiobooks, uploading thousands of titles and making them available and we've started on the second collection. 
our goal is to start to differentiate Web 3.0 and showcase real-world use cases for the decentralized web. Please join us for the upcoming Internet Archive webinar in an ever-expanding library using decentralized storage to keep your materials safe on February 24. Registration is open now. And with that, I'll turn it over to Catherine Johnson for the Token Governance Report. Catherine? Thank you. So this is the portion of the town hall where we go over token governance and compliance. At each town hall, we provide highlights from our token balances and flows report. These are published on our blog, and on our blog, you can see detailed information about our tokens balances and flows in a given quarter. Our historic quarterly token balances and flows are all available on our blog, with the token report from Q4 2021 being published on the site this week. These reports have been provided for more than two years and can be viewed both on the website and in our recorded quarterly town halls that are available on YouTube. We now have nearly three years of regular quarterly reporting with the reports posted on our blog and in the town halls, we just give the highlights. Taking a look at the activity in the past quarter, you'll see that storage used 1.7 million tokens for storage operations, with 0.1 million going to storage node operators, 0.5 million going to third-party service providers, 0.6 million used for payment to our storage employees as part of a voluntary token salary program, and 0.5 million in the category of other, which this quarter included a repurchase of company shares from a shareholder. As of the end of Q4, there were 214.4 million storage tokens in long-term lockups, 11.8 million storage tokens in our operating supply, and 198.9 million in circulation, which are not in Storage Labs custody. The total storage token supply is always 425 million. Turning now to the long-term lockups on the next slide, as previously reported, initially we relocked all of our time lock tokens every six months. Each tranche unlocks the last day of the quarter. Starting in 2019, we divided these time lock reserves into eight equal sized tranches of 30.6 million tokens that unlock in successive quarters and relocks respectively to the same quarter two years later. As you can see, the tranche that unlocked at the end of Q1 was relocked until Q1 of 2023. The tranche that unlocked at the end of Q2 was relocked until Q2 2023. The one in Q3 relocked until Q3 2023. And the tranche that just unlocked at the end of December was relocked until Q4 of 2023. From time to time, we may decide to leave one unlocked for operations. In 2022, we left a tranche that we put into operational reserves unlocked, leaving seven cryptographically locked rolling tranches at the time. This year, we expect to leave one tranche unlocked at the end of Q1, which will leave six cryptographically locked rolling tranches after that. The relocking is reported every quarter, both here and in the token report published on our blog with the details in that report with addresses made public for anyone to verify. If the company decides to leave any tranche unlocked, we inform the public of that decision 60 days in advance, which we are doing now for the tranche that will unlock at the end of this quarter. For more information on the token activity over this last quarter, please visit our website at storage.io to read the most recent token flows report. Thanks so much. I'll turn it now to community. Thank you, Catherine. Just a few community updates here as we round out the end of our town hall. First, I want to say thank you to all the storage node operators that make the network possible. It's your storage bandwidth and incredible reliability that make the network as powerful, fast, and economical as it is today. Second, I'd like to just put a call out for community contributions as we continue to open our development process. Please check out the roadmap on GitHub and uh, look and see if there's anywhere where you think you'd like to add into uh, the process, even if it's just helping us with requirements or priority. We will be continuing the storage node operator fireside chats, so watch out for the next one of those coming up in the near future. We'll get the call for questions out, of course, in advance, and then we'll join you for a live presentation and answering those Q&A. Just another quick reminder for our storage node operators, if you haven't signed up for ZK Sync or Polygon or one of the other supported L2 payout channels, please do. And for everyone in the community, please continue to spread the word. We're seeing great success with centralized cloud storage right now. The performance, security, privacy, and economics are amazing. 
and we want to share that with as many prospects and customers as possible. So thank you for attending, and we look forward to talking to you again.